Welcome to RPV City Talk. RPV City Talk is brought to you by the City of Rancho Palos Verdes to inform the community on recent city matters. RPV City Talk is a weekly show that features the RPV Mayor, City Council, or City Employees. Hi everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to RPV City Talk. This is our monthly Mayor's Corner. It's great to have our Mayor Susan Brooks here with us to give us her monthly update of everything going on in the city. How are you? I am great, Liz. Thank you. Happy March. Happy March. And I want to say happy early birthday. You have a birthday oh, yes. tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh yes. How fun. Who would forget? Well, not me. Well, we wish you a happy, healthy year. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Happy this is a wonderful city to celebrate your 40th birthday in. Exactly. If the city's 40th anniversary, we knew it had to be your 40th. Absolutely. Because you were mayor when you were 20, 20 years ago, right? That's right. right. 20, it's all 40. coming together. It's all coming together. This is where we set our residents straight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start off by talking about the last council meeting we just had here on Tuesday. Yes. Um, just issues and events that came up. Um, starters, big news. The city has uh, finally awarded the contract. Should I have a drum roll for the San Ramon project? Um, just go over a little bit, an overview of this project, why it is so important and why it really is you know, a top city goal. Yeah, this, this project actually um, originally was identified as being the uh, number two goal, but it really, in all our hearts, we knew it was the number one goal. Public safety is always going to be number one ideologically, but when you look at infrastructure and you look at the fact that this, la this slide and this floodplain, this problem has been going on for so many years, uh, that it, and it, it had been held in abeyance and held in abeyance. And this is a pipe that has to be drawn from the top of, um, on the east side of the peninsula, in the Marymount College vicinity, going right through underneath the switchbacks. Those switchbacks are those curvy streets that go down on Palos Verdes Drive East to Palos Verdes Drive South, and it will culminate out and run entirely through Rancher Palos Verdes property out in the in the Pacific Ocean. Right now, it's a mishmash of activity that takes place in the middle of the San Ramon Canyon and the landslide, ends up at 25th Street in that disastrous area when we often have floods, la floods and cars cannot go through. Right. And it is just a hair from missing the uh, 450 residents that happen to live in the mobile home park below, which, by the way, is in the city of Los Angeles. So we've spent the last year uh, working very hard as a council and as a city um, to get the funding for this project that had actually been identified a couple of years ago. Um, and now we have finally, after all the bureaucracy and all the permits and everything that's had to take place between the Army Corps of Engineers and everyone else, we finally have a project. We have identified the funding will be coming out of our CIP reserves and we are ready to go forward for the second half of the funding. The first part is a matching grant uh, from the state. It is a $20 million project. $20 million. I mean, that's almost the size of our budget. Which is twenty-four million dollars. So, it really is a critical when you look at project that, that it's critical. We haven't had a lot of heavy rains, but when those heavy right. rains hit, that's when you realize. And it that's just threat. even when it's not a heavy rain, it, ironically, um, moisture seeping out of that um, slide area can bring water onto into that area. And beyond though, the water that was coming down with the debris and the runoff and the problems, also the way that that land is compromising, which could be PV Drive East, right? I mean, that's also a huge issue. That's separate or connected. Well, PV Drive East to the extent that it's going under the so, switchbacks. So right. what it's doing is it's compromising the stability of the s switchbacks. And in the event that they were going to that, if you see how close, if Palos Verdes Drive East, how close that canyon is to the edge of the two edges of the switchbacks, um, precipitously close, there, there is an emergency program intact. However, we believe that we're ready to, um, well, we'll be breaking ground within a month so by say, the end the of April beginning awarded, of May the timeline is by May breaking ground more than two months I yeah, should say yes ideally will be done within the year right well congratulations on having it done while you're mayor on this council because I know I've, we've been hearing about this for so many years that mm -hmm. this needs to be done and it's finally going to, going to be done we're excited we all broke into applause <laughs> <laughs> well, great. So uh, we'll be out we'll there. We'll still love to get some money, by the way, if Don Kanabi, our illustrious county supervisor, should decide to give it. We would love to have some money from you, um, Supervisor as Kanabi, well as and as well as from the city of Los Angeles and, and Joe Buscayeno. Congratulations on your overwhelming win last night. Right. 
it's time to belly up to the bar and give us some money. And, and just explain <laughs> to our residents you. again why this is an issue that impacts, that involves the county and the city. Well, it runs through both areas. Uh, the existing problem runs through the existing piping and, and drainage and problems run through Friendship Park, which is owned by the county. It runs to the city of Los Angeles, where it is most impacted, actually. Right. I know as, uh, as I live off PB Drive South that there's been, you know, many occasions where we can't get through. So yeah, I'm and then you want, I mean, how, do people gonna, how are people going to get yeah, to Terranea, to Trump, and not only that, excuse me, but to Palos Verdes Estates because, and to Rolling Hills because right. many people use that as an access and egress point. So yeah, it's, it's, ne it's necessary arterial. Excellent. So that was the big, um, big item on your agenda this past Tuesday. But you also had a public hearing that was uh, postponed. Uh, that was going to involve the Crestridge Senior Condo Project. Yes. Um, talk about what this project's about. I know again, they, the um, apparently, um, the applicant has had postponed it. So for yes, another month. Yes, they they did postpone it uh, at the very last minute. Um, this project went through the planning commission um, with a tentative track map. Uh, I believe it was, uh, that brought it forward. And what we're dealing with is 60, um, they'll be called residential housing use, units. They would be attached homes, not, not necessarily condos. Okay. And uh, these um, would be uh, two stories, um, two different levels. Um, they have a variety of um, trails and passageways and activities, but um, primarily this would be an independent um, facility on this site. It does require um, 140,000 cubic yards of grading, and that is a considerable amount of grading. And uh, 20 years ago, I can tell you that on the same spot, there were issues with grading. And I'll, we've come a long way, I guess, in terms of the facilitation, but it still requires a lot of truckloads of dirt going down Hawthorne Boulevard. Uh, it would be ideal if somehow or other the San Ramon project, or this project, if it did pass, if it does pass the council, that um, some of that dirt could be diverted to the San Ramon area okay. because there's going to be a considerable amount of fill that's going to have to go in there to level out that location. So those details are working out. So the public hearing will be postponed. But this project, um, just to let the residents know exactly, so this is on Crest Ridge Road, and it's in between, uh, this is a senior, like a 55 plus community, 55 is that right? plus, and, and yes. it's in between Belmont, which is yes. assisted living for seniors, and then on the corner there is Mirandella, the Mir Mirandella right. which is affordable housing for seniors. Yes, there was the Mirandella project, and then there would be this Crest Ridge, right next to it. and then the Belmont Living, yes. And the, the Palos Verdes Arts Center, by the way, is right across the street, right. and they are just their finishing their remodel, and I'm really looking forward to that gala coming up on the 16th. Um, moving on, there was another um, item that came up at the council that you um, took up, which was had to do with issuing recycling rebates to repairs, and this is in the aftermath of the beautification program. Um, ending, so to speak, and to explain yes. that what this is going to happen, how this rebates happen, why you're giving out the rebate. Right. Well, the rebates are, at, in, they are part of um, what, um, it is a reward program basically for um, recycling. And it is an amount of money that comes back to each entity. Various cities have chosen along the way to use it in different capacities. PV Estates just automatically, I believe, um, gave it back. Some other cities just absorb it into their budget. But um, for the past 20 years, we had a beautification grant program, and it went into abeyance for about three years. Um, much of that had run its course. However, there was, there was great consternation about just what to do with this amount of money, a couple of hundred thousand dollars. And what has taken place at this point is that it was decided in the council that the fairest way after a very lengthy year of trying to address this issue, um, that the best, play, the best and fairest way to do this was to give a flat amount, give it back to all of the taxpayers, to everybody who participates in the program. Mm -hmm. So they will be receiving in July um, a rebate. Um, it will be a small rebate, um, but equivalent to their amount um, at um, 
in July and it will be retroactive as well as addressing the, the existing year. So these okay. will be on an ongoing basis. And the monies that were coming back from the um, in terms of beautification projects, like when we see things happen in the city with meetings and things, that's separate. Those things will still take place in terms of being able to... To an extent, that's something that uh, greatly concerns me because I really felt that we, we should be able to use some of this money for media maintenance as well. Um, they, they have done so in the past. There has been a media maintenance program. We're looking, the city is looking now at some probably more complex uses of our combining our reserves to address our capital improvement and um, our necessary infrastructure needs. Okay. But it's a continuation because it'll go on. Okay. Um, moving on, I want to let our, remind our residents and um, the, there has been a series of workshops regarding moving on to Palace Verdes Drive East Improvement Project. Um, and there's, you'll be attending the third one and final one. It is at Marymount College on March 13th. And it's to share with the community what's going to be happening with this, this PV Drive East project. It's a huge project. It's a huge project. And uh, it combines um, much needed monies, some grant monies, and I guess some of it has been held off in the year so that in the ensuing year so we can make sure we do it right um, so we don't piecemeal it. And uh, there have, the, the city didn't, I hear from residents only wonderful comments about how well the workshops have been run, how informative the city has been in giving the information out. And so uh, Councilman Mizetich and I uh, will be attending on the 13th of March at, I believe it's 7 p.m. Yeah. at Marymount College. So many of us on the east side, we live on the east side of the hill and um, members of the council have been staggering um, attend their attendance at this because of you know the Brown Act. So it's very, very important that um, this be addressed. It has to do with safety, the visuals. It's a treacherous road to yeah. begin with treacherous road to begin with and when you're dealing you with bicyclists like it is supposed to be one of the 10 most dangerous roads in the state according to county um, statistics wow and so with that information we have um, the knowledge that uh, bicycles are it became a part of the loop trail and it's become something that people really you know, love to do um, when they're bicycling. Know, like anybody wants to ride up that hill. The challenge, it, riding up the hill, riding down the hill. Yeah. If you put the put the bike lane on one side, you've got to put it on the other side, and you've got some very restricted areas there where it just not, won't not room. be able to go. So um, I believe that the traffic safety committee. We have some really good people on there, and they're going to um, be facilitating and working with the staff to help to pave the way, <laughs> so to speak. Right. Pun intended, so that it won't be such a difficult challenge for the council as we move through. But the beginning at Rolling Hills Estates, that's over a year overdue, where Rolling Hills Estates merges with Rancho Palos Verdes. Mm -hmm. And it's an arterial, so it's an arterial program that will be beginning, but we do have a residential paving program that is a regular rotational basis paving program. And that's ongoing right now, the one right you're talking and about? And that is the one that's taking place now. So they are rotational programs. Actually, I started them 20 years ago, 22 years ago on the council. Well, we didn't have a rotation. There was no organized method. And former city manager Paul Bussey, who I am in touch with regularly, will say that prior to that, there was no organized program for residential paving. So if people want to know out there, but that's nice. That's a good job. If people want to know about what's Whatever. going on, the timeline um, for the paving projects, they can go on the city website, go to Public Works, yes. just to kind of find out what's and happening. And see when, when your section is coming up. So go on to uh, palaceverdescom slash RPV, and you can also call the Public Works Department directly. It, it looks great on paper that we have such a healthy reserve, you know, over 60%. However, we have a huge num portion of unfunded infrastructure projects that have been backed up and backed up and backed up. So yes, we are, we've got money for the rainy day, and that's going into the rainy day fund right now for mm -hmm. San Ramon. Of course. But um, this is, uh, the infrastructure projects are huge, and they are backing up, and they are serious. They need to be addressed. So we'll be looking for appropriate monies to help us in a timely manner. We've got a lot going on. 
Um, the back to PV Drive East for a minute. That's going to start this summer, right? Just for the people, what is that when that project's supposed to start? Yes, it's supposed to start this summer. Okay. Yes. For that timeline for that. We are all waiting. That's another thing we've been waiting for. We've been waiting since. Um, well, I've been on that one, <laughs> living there, saying, "Why do these? Everything just keeps getting patched, and let's." Why isn't this done? Anyway, it's because they need to integrate it. There is a there is um, also a um, an awards project, a, a grant project, and there is you know another thing going on in in the Bronco Headland area. We are going to need guardrails also because there are there areas where they have very recently taken out some trees. Um, to some neighbors' consternation, including mine, over in the Miralest area. So uh, these are all very um, important issues. I remember in one of those locations, a youth died 25 years ago, shortly after we moved in, uh, in one of those turns. Yeah. And it, it was a real wake-up call. I remember saying, well, if you can, if you, we can teach our children as they become teenagers how to drive here, they could drive anywhere. I, know, I remember when I first moved out to the hill so 20 plus years ago from Boston and coming up and down that just like this up and down PV Drive right. East it's just just all those hair when turns. my mom was alive she wouldn't even let us drive her down the switchbacks yeah she couldn't look out the window right. I mean it, I forgot that there were people yeah, there are people like caution that. I have friends who live in Palos Verdes Estates or on the other side of the hill that won't come to my house because they don't, they, want, to the they don't want to deal with the switchbacks and they are afraid of any kind of height. So I say, well, come PV Drive East, you won't see it. Very oh, good. yes, out of the corner of my eye, I can see the Well, so, you know, it can whatever. be intimidating to get you get to But it's those, so beautiful and there's, uh, it's, Yes, there may be a price you pay, but it is paradise over there because wow. it is m much more rural. Well, once this PV Drive East project is finished, we'll hopefully no longer have that being distinguished as a very unsafe road. Right, right. So. And for the Marymount students, too, because this, those students are coming in and out, and they're, they're, let's face it, for their new drivers, for the most part, mm -hmm. and we want to make sure they have the safest possible route to and from. All right. Um, we're going to move on to just in general looking into some as you've been sitting as mayor any new interesting issues you're working on and well um my goal has been outreach so i enjoy these coffees i did have to change them from the uh, well i'm not going to say from i'm just going to say to so it doesn't get too confusing um, I, you know these are a volunteer activity that i'm trying to do to as an outreach effort people can always contact me or other council members but I'm doing these on the third Thursday of the month and they start at 10 o'clock at Starbucks in Golden Cove now Starbucks is about to undertake some kind of renovation um, and when that happens we'll have to deal with it at that time I think that may be in June but um, ideally we you know, we would say they would go to noon but there is no ideal time so I would in order to correct this record, because apparently there was someone who was very upset that I wasn't there at 11.40. Uh, we left at 11.30. We, it's a different kind of a setup, and I need to point that out, too. If you have a personal issue you need to come to me or another council about, call us, plan to meet with us. I can be found uh, right after that. I go to You're City very Hall. Accessible. I am always there, and and when I leave that location, I go to City Hall. So if you can't find me there, you'll find me at City Hall, and and I'm not always at City Hall, but I am on that third Thursday because I take the issues that are, are that are, arise out of those discussions and bring them up there and deal with them. But if we if they're over at 11 and there's nothing else to discuss, um, it's over. So it's a volunteer there, activity. What, the is an outreach. You can. outreach is one, um, Liz, but another one which is very important is to make sure that the, the public understands that um, transparency, accountability, and what I've been saying are the three T's and the teamwork, um, uh, transparency, teamwork, and trust. Because <laughs> without trust, you're not going to get anywhere. But without teamwork, you're not going to get anywhere. And we have been working more as a team on the council and working very diligently. Um, Councilman DeHovic and I, Mayor Pro Tem DeHovic and I, um, actually I would say are 
probably working on the more accountability, transparency issues through the perform the um, organizational assessment, right? And uh, several of the other issues that we've identified as areas where we want to make sure that um, the community is able to access information uh, conveniently with uh, a friendly response and to know that yes in fact here is the information and we've uncovered we've spent the year looking at information to see if there is a smoking gun um, you know what's in this closet because when I came into this office I was under the impression or I would say I was given a lot of misinformation about what how you know, City Hall was being run. How City Hall was being run. Also, the whole pension issue. Yes, it's an issue, but it's a statewide issue. And, uh, you know, the, what we as a city can do if we try to pull out of PERS and the amount of money it would cost, um, you know, would be beyond our budget. And uh, are we going to do something like that realistically? Would that be mismanaged? Uh, there are problems with the state pension system. They run nationally. Um, the state teacher system, I might add, is even, even bigger trouble, as I'm told. So there are problems, but I think it's important to note that um, I, one of my goals is to make sure that we do get the information out. We are as transparent as possible. There are some individuals, I believe, who will, will never will never satisfy. There are always going to be people that are very skeptical about government. And they will. And, and I'm pretty skeptical, particularly about state and, and federal government right. these days. But, but local government is where you see it. And we're not dealing with a huge budget. We are a low-tax city. So there may be other reasons why individuals may or may not, um, you know. Right. Because uh, when, when you first campaign to you know, see the need to um, make sure that we're um, transparent or they may not um, agree or they may constantly be looking for another problem. Right. When you first campaigned though, you were said like yourself, you initially thought, you know, was you know, back in the day when you were first on the council twenty years ago, since then the budget, you know, and the since then, yes, the staff had doubled in size, and you had concerns. But now, after being here and really looking well, and into I it, did, and I said I wanted to look into these and see these, and and the more I look at, and that's what we've done. We have spent this year doing this, and I would say that uh, the majority of the council has, um, the vast majority of this council has all chipped in to see just what has taken place here, and you know, Anthony Mizetich when he was mayor, and now he's councilman. He took a tremendous stride in making sure that we would be accountable, and he worked on those hybrid-based budgets. And um, all of the council members actually are looking at the bottom line, so in their own way and cumulatively. And I know myself as a resident here, to me the bottom line is overall you look at the quality of life on RPV, you look at how healthy the budget is and all that, you got to think that they're doing a lot of things right and how the city's being managed. That to me would be common sense, but... Well, a couple of things happened in the last 20 years. I mean, yes, um, I, my concern was that uh, staff had increased and that the... I wasn't sure about the level of service. I didn't see on the surface a, a tremendous difference. But uh, the population has stayed the same at 42,000. So I figured, well, what is the problem? So we came in, and that's where this, this performance evaluation or organizational assessment will, um, will show. Um, it's, uh, it's going to show, I think, that the city is in. It, there are suggestions, good suggestions. We, always want, we can always improve. And we have spent this year improving and working to improve. So a lot of people had some very valid concerns. And um, I'm not going to say they were not valid. I'm just saying that as we reach this point now, we've got to look at what's real and what's hypothetical. And some people just, I believe, are content being miserable. Or there are some individuals who enjoy a lousy day. Right. And there are some individuals who may be um, anarchists or obstructionists. And that's not my goal, is not to work with obstructionists. My goal is to Teamwork. see to the, but also, yeah, teamwork, but it's really about the people. It's not about stopping anything and good. 
moving on about the people because we have to wrap it up we only have a few minutes left we always like to talk about the fact that this community is celebrating the people 40th anniversary of the city of Rancho Palos Verdes lots of milestones 25th of the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy 100 years for Vandalip purchasing the PV property um, but but our 40th the city's 40th you're very excited this is oh I am be we, a lot to celebrate all year long we we I am and and we are and um, as I look at the 20th and I've got here the Palace Verdes Review which was the newspaper uh, it was the magazine the magazine um, of uh, 20 years ago it was the equivalent not the equivalent but very similar to um, Peninsula people uh, but it gave more in-depth stories and they really did an in-depth story on our 20th anniversary and I mean, there were just some great little factoids, if I could just tell you one. Well, let you, you give us one a show. No, because I can. <laughs> I can tell you well one is where was the first city hall, and where was what was the um, where was the location of the first city hall? Golden Cove. It was Golden Cove Plaza. That's right. Good place and to then the the, the the name of Rancho of Rancho Palos Verdes was almost changed to another name. And that was going to be a shorter version, Palos Verdes. And that was going to be Palace. I watched the city council meeting. Susan, I love the fact that the mayor is giving out these factoids, which are very interesting and fun. So I yeah, and the next one will have to do with the wake that they had when the so fourth city was declared dead on arrival. And Paul Conrad, the famous cartoonist, and how he observed in that so wake. So our, our residents will have to watch or attend the next city council meeting because you're going to be sharing all of these interesting facts as well, we go, right? Well, sure, I hope to. Good stuff. All right, we've got to wrap it up. Anything you want to add as we're out of time here, but uh, we'll have you back in next month as well. Well, yes, we'll look forward to um, an exciting month. We've got a lot on our plate, and we have had a lot. This, this council has accomplished quite a lot in the last year. We've addressed trails issues. We've addressed San Ramon. We have addressed, we've, our crime statistics are down because we've actually increased our budget for crime, and I just want to say that I'm very I'm honored to be on this council, working for the people, and I think the council has done a good job for the people, and I hope to hear from you, okay. good or bad. <laughs> well, anyway, um, one last thing is to whale of a day. I saw you there at the celebration, a lot of fun. Great, oh, I love it. That's oh my gosh, we were so excited. We had so much fun, and we saw that Pacific bluefin whale out there. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that was the second Wonderful. largest. And we have a couple more celebrations we want to reference. One is um, the city is sponsoring um, an egg hunt coming up. And oh, that's yes. going to be March 30th. Um, that will be held as sponsored by the city of RPV at Ladera Linda. So you can go on the website to find out about that. We just celebrated, um, the schools just celebrated, uh, honored Kelly Johnson. And I taught on, with him as principal over right. at that school. And it, if anybody deserves it, he really deserves yeah. it. That beautiful big field house they just opened for Kelly Johnson at Peninsula Pencil. High School. Terrific. So it was great. All right. Well, we'll have lots more to talk about on the next show. Always wonderful to have you here. Oh, always Brooks. wonderful to be here. Thank you. I, happy birthday we, again. Oh, thank you. All right. Thank you. That'll be fun. All right. That'll be this edition of RPV City Talk. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. See you next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>